So guys, today's questions that all, all the questions that we're going to be working from is a 2013 exam paper. Uh, one of the reasons I picked that paper was um, there's some really good excellence questions and it actually covers a wide range of skills you guys need to know. So the first question I'm going to ask you guys to try and uh, work through is this one here. All right. Now just can you give me a show of hands. How many of you guys got... Uh, no idea of how to start this. That's definitely algebra. It's not calculus. Okay, so what I, I would say to you guys is this. Whenever you see a question like this, right, like where you've got, um, you know, your, your first instinct right now is to rearrange and actually solve for x. That's your first in instinct. Now, you can actually do that. It would work. But the other thing is, I want you guys to actually go back to this question and have a look. If you look at this part right here, now the x plus 2 is being put around, it's around a bracket, like there's a bracket around it. Now there's a particular reason why that x plus 2 has been put around the bracket. Okay? Because if you think about it, this question right here, we could have actually written it like this. x plus 2 minus 3, uh, 3 root x plus 2 minus 4 equals to 0. And then you could have written it like this. Because um, plus 2 and minus 4 is minus 2 equals to 0. It could have, the question could have been given like that to you. But they didn't. Yeah? So there's a reason why that brackets is around it. And um, one other thing I'm going to give you guys is I'm going to give you guys a little hint here. You must have actually seen this. Try using u equals square root of x plus 2. I'm going to give you guys that as a little hint and see if you can try and try and work this through. And if you don't, I'll give you one more clue. One more clue is this. This equation right here. There's three elements to it. All right, and usually uh, when you have three elements into it, you're probably looking at a quadratic. So you need to rewrite that equation in green box as a quadratic. So, do you guys want me to help you with this? And then I'll give you guys another question like this. Yep, okay. So if you put u equals to square root of x plus 2, then you can actually say u squared equals to x plus 2. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah? So I'm going to rewrite this entire equation in this green box. And instead of writing it with x plus 2, I'm going to write it with in terms of u. So x plus 2 equals u squared. So I can put that as u squared minus 3. And then x plus uh, square root of x plus 2 is actually equal to u. So I can rewrite that as u minus 4 equals to 0. And suddenly, you've got a really nice, simple quadratic equation. Because you can factorize this. You can actually factorize this to be u minus 4 multiplied by u plus 1 equals to 0. Is that all right? And then what we can do from here is we can say that u is equal to 4 or negative 1. Now, doing this is not actually enough. Because if you go back to the question, the question actually says, find the value of x. What you have actually found is the value of u. So you got to go back and find what x is. So that means, because remember I did say, u equals square root of x plus 2. Now I've got two u's. The first one is 4. So I've got 4 equals square root of x plus 2. And then negative 1 equals square root of x plus 2. You guys happy with that? Now the first one, we can actually do this. Because we can actually say... Uh, 4 squared equals x plus 2, because I'm just squaring both sides. So I'm squaring this, and I'm squaring this to get rid of that square root symbol. 
And what I'm left with is 16 equals x plus 2, and then x is equal to 16 minus 2, which means x is equal to 14. All right? And then in the second one, it's actually very natural for people to do this. People will just go like this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to square this, square this, and I end up with 1 equals to x plus 2, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. I want you guys to just think about this. Um, and I'm going to actually undo a couple of my actions here. All the way up to here. Give me a second. I'm not going to do it yet. I'm actually going to redo it. Sorry. Let's go back. Let's do this, all right? So if I rearrange this, I get 1 uh, minus 2 equals x, and then x is equal to negative 1. I think that's what everybody does, yeah? You guys happy with that? Is somebody not happy with it? Can I ask you guys to go back and read the question again? Right now, you've got two answers for x. You've got x is equal to 14, which is right here, and you've got x equals to negative 1. But if you go back to the question, the question actually says the equation, blah, 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 has one real solution. But you've actually got two answers. So one of the things that we ask you guys to do in level 2 is that no matter, anytime you find uh, x and it has like two or three answers, is go back and put it into the original equation and see if it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two numbers here and I'm going to substitute them. I'm talking about these two numbers here and I'm going to substitute them into this equation to see if they work or not. So I've got x equals to 14 and then x equals negative 1 and my equation was x plus 2 minus 3 times x plus 2 minus 4 equals to 0 and in the other one I've got the same equation but I've got to substitute 14 and negative 1 to see whether this equation whether they actually work out can I ask you guys to do that to substitute 14 into the first equation and substitute negative 1 into the second equation and see if it actually works out okay, I'm hoping you guys work through it so I've got 14 plus 2 minus 3 times 14 plus 2 minus 4 equals to 0 so I've got 14 plus 2 is 16 minus 3 times square root of 16 minus 4 equals to 0 16 minus 4 is 12 12 minus 3 times 4 12 minus 12 equals to 0 and then I've got so this one is fine when x equals to 14 but when I try x equals to negative 1 I've got negative 1 plus 2 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 2 minus 4 equals to 0 so I've got 1 minus 3 times square root of 1 equals to 0 1 minus 3 minus 4 equals to 0 and I've got negative 6 equals to 0 so this is not possible so that means you need to actually write a sentence at the end therefore x equals to 14 and x is not equal to negative 1 okay so what I would like you to do is um, similar question but they could end up asking it something like this Uh, I'm just trying to think. Okay, you guys did ask for uh, uh, this type of question. So, <laughs> what I've done is I've said find x if 4 to the power of x minus 2x plus 12 equals, oh sorry, not plus 12, it's going to be minus 12. equals to zero now here's the hint that I'm gonna give you guys 
This is exactly, you confused with this question already. Okay, this is exactly like the previous question we did. All right, the only difference in this case is that the x is actually to the power, right? But I want to show you guys this. What if you do, if you put u equals 2x? All right. Now, this, this question here is, was one of my favorite questions because people always end up going, man, I've, uh, they start doing things like this. I've seen them um, rewrite with uh, 12 as a base of 2 and stuff like that. But remember this, 4x, 4x could be written as 2 to the power of 2x. Yeah? Do you guys agree with that? So then I could also do this. I could rewrite 4x as 2 to the power of x times 2. Do you guys agree with that? Then can't I say 4x is equal to 2 to the power of 2 times x? Isn't that the same thing as what I've just done so far? And the final magic trick is this. 4x could be written as 2 to the power of x Do you guys agree with that? So then, can't we say 4x is actually equal to u squared? Now try what we did in the last question with this, because you've got u, uh, 4x equals u squared, u equals to 2x. So you can set up your equation. Your equation is going to look like this. u squared minus u minus 12 equals to zero. So go try that now. Okay, so this is what you guys should have done because this is a nice quadratic. You got u minus 4, u plus 3 equals to zero. Then you can say therefore u is whoa. Hang on. We can try it later on. Anyway, so what we had was u, we had u equals to 4 or u equals to negative 3. Now, we know that u is equal to 2 to the power of x. So we can say that 2 to the power of x is equal to 4 or 2 to the power of x equals minus 3. Now, folks, if you guys try 2 to the power of x equals minus 3, uh, theoretically, it's actually not possible. So in this case, uh, we can say not possible, can't actually solve for x. But in this case, we can say that x is equal to 2. But the way, if you want to just to tip, you can also do log 4 divided by log 2 to figure out what x is. And so x is equal to 2. That's the only solution for this one. Because for the other side, you can't actually have it. Are we okay with this? Okay, I'm going to give you guys one more, but this time I am not going to actually give you guys a hint at all. you got to try and figure it out. Is that all right? Or do you guys want to move on to the next slot? Move on? Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on to another question. Okay, so... So this was a question from 2013 again, of course. Um, so in this equation, they're asking you, explain why this equation does not have any real solutions and explain what this means graphically. Now, first up, anytime you're talking about solutions, you're actually going to be uh, they're talking about discriminants. Am I right? So if it, if it does not have any solutions, what does the discriminant have to be? Thank you. So we know that for this equation, if it doesn't have any real solutions, then b squared minus 4ac has to be less than 0. So right now we've got this equation here. 3x plus 1 squared equals minus 7. What you guys need to do is you need to expand it, rearrange it, so that you end up with something that looks, an equation that looks like this where it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero once you get that 
what you can then do is go and find out what b squared minus 4ac is and see if it's actually less than zero. So I'm going to give you guys about four to five minutes for this question because it just needs that time to expand it, rearrange, and do all of those things. So I'm going to give you guys that time, all right? Okay, so the thing that you guys needed to do was expand the quadratic. So you've got 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1 equals minus 7. So you've got 9x squared uh, plus 3x plus 3x, that's 6x, plus 1 plus 7 equals to 0. So you got 9x squared plus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. So if I work out what b squared minus 4ac is, uh, b squared, so a equals 9, b equals 6, c equals to 8. So I've got 6 squared minus 4 times 9 times 8. And I think minus 252. Now, if you actually stop here, this is getting you just uh, and achieved. If you actually stop here, okay? Because this question, it says, <clears throat> explain why it does not have any real solutions. So you need to actually mention, uh, because discriminant, I'm just going to use this symbol here, discriminant is less than zero, there are no x-intercepts. Oh, actually, no, there are no intercepts, not x-intercepts. Actually, x-intercepts. What am I saying? Yeah, no x-intercepts. Jeez. Need coffee. And, um, and the second thing is, it's asking you, explain what this means graphically. <laughs> okay? So you need to actually mention that the two graphs don't intersect. All right? That's what it actually means by um, in terms of what this would look like in a graph, if you think about it, you've got, let me see if I've got it opened up. I'll show you guys what these two graphs look like so you can actually see um, what's happening. So we've got two graphs. Our first graph is actually 3x plus 1 squared. And our second graph is minus 7. And as you guys can see, there's no way that red line and that green line is actually going to meet. Okay? So that parabola, and, and also if you think about it, a parabola is above the x-axis all the time, right? Uh, especially a positive parabola. And then in this case, we're trying to look for, we're looking for a, a, a parabola. When is a parabola going to equal a negative number? Now, if you think about it, a square number could never be a negative number, can it? Because if you square a number, it's always going to be positive. Like if you take one squared, it's going to be one. If you take negative one squared, it's going to be positive one. So you can never get a squared number which equals to a negative number. Because if I want to show you one more step is this. If I had 3x plus 1 squared, equals negative 7. If I take square root of both of these sides, what happens is I end up with 3x plus 1 equals square root of negative 7. And right now, you guys actually can't square root a negative number. And that's how you know something's not actually correct there. Okay, cool. Um, so remember, guys, going back to this question, whenever you get uh, asked for an explain or, or anything like that, or describe what the discriminant is, You've got to write a full sentence. Don't just leave just with a number because if you just do the discriminant and leave it as it is, then that's just like achieved. Sometimes it's not even an achieved. So you got to make sure you read the question properly and just check what it is that they're asking for and make sure you answer it. All right, next question. Uh, this is one of my other favorites. So what I'd like you guys to do is to rearrange this formula so that X is by itself. And when we finish this question, I'm going to try and see if I can do another one like this with you guys. So, the little hint I'm going to give you guys is this. If you have x to the power of 3, and if you take log of x to the power of 3, 
you can rewrite this as 3 log x. So this could be written 3 log x. That's the hint I'm going to give you guys. Try that and use that and that should help you. So remember I gave you guys this clue, right? So what you can actually do is I actually do this. a to the power of x equals 5 to the power of x minus 1. Then take logs of both sides. So then this would become log ax equals log 5x minus 1. All right, everyone should be okay with that. The next step is actually bringing that power in front of the log. So then this could be rewritten as x log a equals x minus 1 log 5. Now what I've actually noticed people make a mistake with is I'm just going to check uh, 2D, 2D expression. No, this is this gets you nothing. Uh, the mistake that I see people doing here is that not putting a bracket around x minus 1. Okay? It's really important to put that bracket around x minus 1. Otherwise, people tend to kind of like forget about it almost. All right? So once you do that, the next step is actually to expand, expand the bracket. So you're going to end up with x log a equals x log 5 minus 1 times log 5 is log 5. Now once you do this, bring all the x's to one side. So we're going to rewrite this as x log a minus x log 5 and that's equal to minus log 5. You're all right up to this step, weren't you? Again, we're trying to make x the subject, and we've actually got two x's here. They're both common factors, so I can take it out. And what will end up is we have log a minus log 5 equals minus log 5. And at this point, we want to have x by itself. So x is equal to minus log 5 divided by log a minus log 5. Now I was walking around and some person decided to do this. They saw the log 5s and decided to cancel this. All right, you cannot do that folks. Okay, it doesn't work like that. So please don't do that. This is absolutely fine, leaving your answer like this. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you guys a similar question like that for you guys to try and do uh, for rearranging. Now, in terms of grades, uh, in log fam and expanded, right here, that right there can get you a, a merit. So doing that. And I think fully, fully doing it gets you an excellence. And this was in 2013. I don't know what times are like right now. All right, one more question like this. What's the time? We've got time. So another rearrange question. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to work. Oh, actually, wait, 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 wait. I realized this mistake that I made last time. Okay, I would like you guys to rearrange for P. Okay, so the first step I would have done here is I'd actually got rid of the 81. So I'm going to write this as 81. I actually tricked you guys in this to a degree because I do apologize about it. But have a look how I actually do this question. So... 3 to the power of 2 minus p, I could rewrite this as 3 squared over 3 to the power of p. Do you guys agree with it? And then that would become b to the power of p 
And then 81, I can rewrite 81 as 3 to the power of, what could I write it as? 4. And then what I'm going to do is at this rate, cross multiply, and I've got 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 4 equals b to the power of p times 3 to the power of p. So 3 squared times 3 to the power of 4 is going to be 3 to the power of 6. And here, because p is a, a common power, I could rewrite this as 3b to the power of p. And then I could say uh, logs of both sides. So this would become log 3 to the power of 6 equals log 3b to the power of p. And then remember, I could bring the powers in the front. So this could be 6 log 3 equals 6, sorry, p log of 3b. And then just write p by itself. So 6 log 3 divided by log 3p. I do apologize. I, I was supposed to mess around with you guys in terms of how you, you were supposed to get confused in it. And I think you did by the looks of it. So... Um, you could have done it another way. You could have actually bought the 81 to the top here. So you could have actually said from this part here, you could have said 81 times 3 to the power of 2 minus P equals B to the power of P. Okay. And, and I think this is where people start making that mistake. If you are going to take a log of this, You can't actually rewrite this as 2 minus p times log of 81 times 3. If you do that, that's where you actually end up being incorrect. Remember this. One of the log rules is this. If you have from here to here, it'll look like this. Log 81 plus log of 3 to the power of 2 minus p equals bp. Because remember that when you have log of A times B, you can write that as log of A plus log of B. It's one of the log rules there. But again, there's just so many different ways you can kind of mess around with this and work around it. So I would say just have a play with it. And uh, if you got a different answer, come and show me and I'll double check to see whether you're on the right track or not. Okay, last question for this session, guys. Or was that it? No. Nope. This is the last question. So what we have got here is we've got one equation that has two distinct roots. It says if 2 is a root of this equation, find the value of k and the second root. All right. I'm going to let you guys a couple of minutes to try it out. Those of you guys that uh, probably saw this whole two distinct roots and got really excited, and just went, oh yeah, b squared minus 4ac is equal to, no, no, wait, that's two roots. So it's actually bigger than zero. Uh, and then you're going to go, oh, yep, so a is equal to 3, b equals to 4, c equals to negative k. Uh, and then you go, what does it say? What does it say? So we can go 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 3 times c, which is negative k is greater than 0, and you're going 16 plus 12k is greater than 0, and then you're going, oh, this is fantastic, negative 12, sorry, plus 12k is greater than negative 16, and then you can actually finish off by saying, have I done this right so far, b squared minus 4ac, yep, greater than negative 16 over 12. So you're saying k is greater than negative 4 over 3. Is that what you guys did? No? Glad glad you said no, because that's not what we we're supposed to do. I just took you on a little bit of a trial there. Because look at the question, guys. The question's actually not... 
It's asking for find the value of k. It's not asking you for, for what values of k is this going to have two distinct roots. If the question was for what value of k is this equation going to have two distinct roots, then you can say this is my working out. But that's not what the question is asking. The question is actually saying that if 2 is a root of this equation, find the value of k and the second root. Now here's the thing. If 2 is a solution, then one of the factors, because you see how this is a quadratic, right? You got 3x squared plus 4x minus k. This could be factorized into two brackets. And if 2 is a solution, we know what the first bracket is. The first bracket is x minus 2. Because that's when you get 2 as a solution. That means the second bracket here, if you look at the coefficient, like you know how the coefficient of this x and coefficient, coefficient of this x must equal 3x squared. So that means this value, this bracket here, is going to start with 3x. And as for k, For k, you're going to get negative 2 times this number here, whatever it is, that's going to equal to k. Yeah? But we don't know what that is as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a new number. We're going to call this n. You can call it whatever you want except k. Don't call it k. All right? And what I'm going to do is on the second, on the right-hand side, I'm going to expand this bracket. So I've got x times 3x which is 3x squared, x times n is nx, negative 2 times 3x, which is negative 6x, and then negative 2 times plus n, which is negative 2n. This simplifies to 3x squared, um, and I've got x as a common factor here, so I can actually rewrite this as n minus 6x, minus 2n. And on the left hand side, I've got 3x squared plus 4x minus k. Now, this is the part I want you guys to watch. The coefficient of x is 4. The coefficient of n, uh, x on this side is n minus 6. That means we can say 4 equals n minus 6, which means n is equal to 4 plus 6 which equals to 10. We also know what uh, negative k is. We know that negative k equals negative 2n because that's the final part here. Look at this. Negative k equals negative 2n. Now if negative, sorry, if n equals to 10, then we can say negative k equals negative 2 multiplied by 10 and you're going to get negative k equals negative 20. Therefore, k is actually equal to 20. And again, I'm going to go back to the question. The question says, if 2 is the root of this equation, find the value of k and the second root. So we found the value of k, but we got to find the value of the second root, which is this one right here. So we're going to go 3x plus n, but we found out what n is, which is 10. If that's a factor, Remember that equals to 0 for a solution. Then we've got 3x equals minus 10. And x is equal to negative 10 over 3. So that's the second solution. Okay. All right. Um, so going back to this question, just because it says it has two, just because it says it has two distinct real roots, just don't jump straight into that going, oh yeah, discriminant is greater than zero and start working it out. All right? Because sometimes the questions, they, they give you little things, but then they just, it's, it's more of a distraction for you. And, um, I'd be surprised, like at least, uh, somebody must have tried this here. Did you try? Liar. What did you guys do? Did you guys try the left-hand side working? Yeah, there you go. There's at least one. But yeah, this is just another another set of uh, different type of question that they ask. All right? Okay, guys, that's us for the time today. Uh, I'm not sure. Just keep an eye on the tutorials. Um, 
Google Sheet. I'll put up the next one when we're doing for the calculus version, all right? Uh, I might actually do the calculus one in my class today. If I do, just keep an eye on this document. It should up update for the calculus one. So if you go back to home, so see uh, the part there in calculus, there's an excellence version of this. So I'll be doing that later today with my class, but I'll record it and I'll upload it so you guys can access it. Okay? Thank you.